Hey y'all, what's going on? It's DIY Alex back with another Tutorial Tuesday where I'm gonna be talking all about the rotary blade and the Cricut Maker. Now I am a little bit earlier than usual, so I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes to jump on and join me, and then we are gonna jump right in. I'm a little bit early because I have to get off earlier than usual so that I can go pick up my husband from work. <laughs> so while we are waiting, um, I'm gonna go ahead and roll some more flowers while we're chatting, and then we will get into it. So I'm not sure how far we're gonna get in on the project today. We're definitely gonna talk about the rotary blade itself and how all that works, but I'm gonna be taking this plain wreath form and using felt flowers to cover all this over to make like a Valentine's Day wreath. But like I said, we may not get as far on the project as I'd like. The more important thing is that we learn about the rotary blade because that's the topic of today's tutorial. So if you're joining me, let me know down here in the comments. Hey, Roseanne, welcome. I'm glad you guys found me early. I try to always post in my Facebook group and on my Facebook page when I have changes and things like that. So if you're not already following me over there, make sure that you are because that's where you're gonna get the real time updates. Hey, Amber, welcome. So I've actually been cutting these felt flowers all morning, um, but I thought I had a little bit more time and then I just talked to my husband and it, things got a little mixed up. So that's why I'm here early, but no big deal. We're still gonna learn lots of great stuff and it's going to be great. So um, since we're talking about it, the thing that's funny about doing rolled paper flower, or I, excuse me, rolled felt flowers instead of rolled paper flowers as if they are just kind of in this one long string. Um, when you work with paper, it is a lot more like it kind of keeps its form a little bit better, whereas felt is just floppy, especially this like really cheap, simple craft felt versus like the stiffer felt. So when I roll my flowers, I like to use the um, Cricut reverse tweezers and I pinch the end in my tweezers and that's how I roll my flowers when I do it like this. Hey, Catherine, welcome. Hi, Shabri. Good, good. So glad you guys are here. So I know it's a little bit hard to see and I'll show you up closer when uh, we get started because I have my overhead camera set up for that, but I'm just pinching it in the end and I'm starting to roll it. Something else that's different about rolling felt flowers is that um, you do have to keep that bottom really even. So when you work with rolled paper flowers, they're super forgiving and you can fix them up all along the way. But since felt kind of sticks to itself, you do have to keep that bottom even. Otherwise, by the end, it's gonna end up looking real wacky. <laughs> the petals are not gonna be even and it's not gonna look as nice and neat. So you kind of wanna go slower from the beginning to make sure that everything looks nice and neat. Hey, Kayleen, welcome. Hi, Mary. Hi, Bambi, so glad you guys are here. So yeah, I'm gonna give you guys another couple of minutes to get started because I know we're a little bit early, but we're gonna be talking all about the rotary blade today. And I'm so excited to dive into these different tools. I finally had, I was having a little bit of trouble in case you guys don't um, follow me and you didn't already see me talk about this. I was having a little bit of trouble deciding how I wanted to go about the Cricut Maker series because there's just simply so much to cover. Um, and so I finally feel like I had like a breakthrough this week and I really got my thoughts organized and I need to continue down that process, but I'm really, really excited for where it's going. So um, when I get to the end of my flower here, you can see it's a lot thicker than a rolled paper flower would be, of course, because the felt's a lot thicker. Now I'm just gonna cover the bottom with tons of hot glue and then um, it'll be ready to roll. So I have two glue guns uh, heated up right now because Earlier today, I thought that my um, old favorite here, the, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on the name. The brand is Sure Bonder, the Lynn Lily glue gun. That's my favorite one, the pretty one. I thought that it was dying on me <laughs> because it wasn't turned on. So I plugged in this one and it turned out that it just wasn't down deep in the base enough. So the wireless part like wasn't charging or whatever. So everything's fine. But I went ahead and heated up a second glue gun just in case. Okay, perfect. Hi, Tracy, welcome. So glad you guys are here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into some more of the content of today's tutorial. So like I was saying earlier, hi, Virginia, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. 
So what I was saying earlier is we're mainly going to talk about the rotary blade today. And I don't know how much of the tutorial that we're going to get into um, today because I do have to pick my husband up from work. So I'm on a bit more of a time crunch than usual. But the more important thing is that we're going to talk about the rotary blade. And if we get time, we're going to talk about how to make a like kind of Valentine's Day felt flower wreath. So that's what we're using the rotary blade to create today. So, oh, hi, Vanessa. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. So let's talk a little bit about the rotary blade. I'm actually going to send you guys overhead so that I can show you everything and actually show it to you in my machine. So this is what our overhead situation looks like today. Whoops, I'm going to get those. I was going to show my face in there. Hang on just a second. Will I get everything right? There we go. There. Hi. Now you can see me up in the top corner of the screen. So we're going to talk today about one of the maker only tools, and that is the rotary blade. So, and I actually realized I've never shown you guys this. So I have the Cricut tool holder, which I actually really like, but I found a solution for storing all my maker tools that I really like even more. I bought this 3D printed tray from Amazon and it fits right down inside my Maker 3's lid and I can keep a bunch of stuff in here. Now, I don't know that I could fit every single tool, but I can fit a lot of them right inside my Cricut Maker tray, which I love because it doesn't take up any additional storage. So I'm obsessed. But anyway, this is where I store my rotary blade. And the rotary blade looks like this when you get it up close. Also, I apologize for the ridiculous looking nails. I was hoping to take my nail polish off today, but we just didn't get there. <laughs> so the rotary blade looks like this when you receive it. And if you have an original Cricut Maker, so not a Cricut Maker 3, an original Cricut Maker, then you received the rotary blade along with your box. Because when they first came out with the Cricut Maker, the main marketing tool that they were using is the ability to cut fabric and the rotary blade cuts fabric. So that's why it was included with the purchase of your machine. But if you have a Cricut Maker 3, you will have to purchase the rotary blade separately. And I do have everything linked down from Amazon in the description below. I also started a listing on my Amazon storefront full of all of my Cricut Maker essentials. So if you have a Cricut Maker, you may want to go check that out. So let's talk a little bit more about the rotary blade itself. So one thing that you'll notice is that there's no button on the top of the um, rotary blade like there is on top of the quick swap housing. So that means that this does not use the quick swap housing. The housing that comes with the rotary blade is the only housing that it utilizes. So I'll talk about the quick swap housing really quick, but we're not going to stay there too long. So most of the rotary tools have what's called the quick swap housing. And what that means is that there's a little silver plunger here on the top. And when you wanna change out the bottom pieces, all you have to do is press down the plunger and pull the bottom right off. And you can switch out, I think there's about four or five different tools that goes into the quick swap housing. But that was something that was super confusing to me as a Cricut beginner. I was like, well, wait, doesn't that mean that I have the quick swap housing if I have the rotary blade? You do not. You have to have the quick swap housing that has the silver plunger on the top in order to change out the tips because the rotary blade and the knife blade both have their own housing that only stays with their blade, if that makes sense. You'll also notice that it has a plastic cover across the front of it, and that is normal. So I'm going to show you how to load that into your Cricut machine, but essentially the way that's going to work is that the plastic is going to face out towards you to protect you from the movement of the um, gear here, and you're going to leave the open part at the back of your Cricut machine. That's how it's going to attach into the, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the word, <laughs> the adaptive tool system in the tool holder. So a few things to keep in mind for that. So another thing to note about the rotary blade is that typically all of the blades are going to have some kind of number on the side to tell you what tool they are. But something unique about the rotary blade is because it was the first adaptive tool system tool, there is no number on it. 
So when you're looking at your tools and you're not sure which is which, if you're looking for the rotary blade, you're looking for the tool that does not have a number on it. Now the numbers don't seem to have any significance or they don't really follow any order that I could follow. Um, but I just wanted you guys to know that because I was looking for my rotary blade the other day. And when you look at all these tools, they do look really similar. They're kind of hard to tell apart, especially ones like this. So I was looking for the number on it and I realized that there wasn't one. So like, for example, if you look on the side of, this is the engraving tool, it says number 41 right there. It's kind of hard to see, but it says number 41 so that you always know that this is the engraving tool if you get all your tools mixed up. But the rotary blade does not have any kind of number. Another thing to note is that when you look at the shape of the rotary tool itself, it basically looks like a rotary cover or a rotary cutter that you would use for sewing. You know, the one that you would hold by hand and just like cut your fabric like this, except it's like a little tiny version of it. And that's because we use it for cutting fabric. So that's a lot of the things I wanted to tell you. I did write down some notes to make sure that I told you everything. Um, let's see. Oh, another thing that's really unique about the rotary tool itself is that you don't have to have a backer with the fabric that you use with it. So you can just stick the fabric straight onto the mat. And I'm going to show you some tricks for that when we actually cut our felt. Um, but you don't have to have any kind of backer. So that's kind of what makes the, one of the things that makes the maker machines unique from the Explore series. With the Explore series, if you do cut any fabric, it has to have a bonded backer, such as heat and bond or some kind of backing to keep the fabric stiffer. Whereas the rotary blade can cut just about any fabric you can think of. And I'm not gonna go through a full list of all the things that the rotary blade can cut because the list is very long, but you can actually find it in your custom materials in your Cricut Maker settings if you're curious about all the options. Now, I have not used the rotary blade a ton. I have used it to cut um, lace. I used actually the bottom of my wedding dress. I took some of the scraps from what they took off my wedding dress and I cut little circles using the rotary blade out of lace and I put the lace circles into epoxy, into some jewelry settings and I gave them to my mom and my mother-in-law. Um, so I've cut lace with it. And then more commonly, what I've cut with it is felt. So that's what we're going to be doing today because that's what I use it for the most because I am not a sewist. I honestly wish I was. I'm so jealous of the people who can sew. I really, really want to learn, but that's not something that I've gotten to yet. So that's kind of my rundown on the rotary blade and all of the preliminary information that you need to know. So now I'm going to check the comments for you guys and see what questions you have and all the things. Hey, Ashley, welcome. Hi, D. So Faith, great question. She says, can this be used in the Cricut Explore Air 2? In fact, let me see if I can spotlight your question, if I can find it. <laughs> I don't know if I can find all of these. You guys have so many comments. You're so sweet. Hmm. Okay, here it is. So I have the Explore Air 2, will this work? And the answer to that is no, Faith. These um, unique tools, especially when they have, oh, you guys can't see that anymore, sorry. When they have this um, gold gear at the top, that is meant to go into clamp B of the adaptive tool system. And only the Cricut Maker 3 and the Cricut Maker have the adaptive tool system. So it cannot be used with the Explore machines. Let's see. I want to see what, if there's any other comments or questions. Uh, Virginia, yes. So the Cricut Maker, when I refer to the Cricut Maker, I'm basically referring to the Cricut Maker 3 and the original Cricut Maker because as far as tools go, everything is across the board the same. But great question. Just reading through all of your comments. Hi, Kristen. Welcome. I'm glad you made it. Hi, Ashley. Glad you're here. Good, good, good. Okay. So now that we've covered all of those kinds of basics, the next thing I want to do is I actually want to show you how to um, cut felt using the rotary blade. 
So I put my regular fine point blade back in and we are gonna walk through the entire process. But the first thing that I'm gonna do is screen share with you so that I can show you um, Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna show you how I actually set this project up so that you guys know how to make things like this. And then we will dive in to the other stuff as well. Oh, it looks like, oh no, my computer didn't disconnect. It's just out of the way. Cheryl said, is it hard to change the tool? No, Cheryl, it's actually very easy. And I'm gonna show you the whole process for um, putting the tool into the machine, how to change it in Cricut Design Space. It's actually very, very easy. So I'm glad you asked. That's what we're gonna be going over today. Okay, so let me minimize this. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys over here on desktop. And I'm gonna show you how we do this. So the reason that I have two rolled paper flowers here is because I did not want to change the cut setting every single time. The one difference between the Cricut Maker 3 and the regular Cricut Maker is that the Cricut Maker 3 will make you reset the cut setting every single mat. So I just originally had one paper flower, or I guess it's not a paper flower, it's a rolled flower that we're gonna cut out of felt. But I only had one on my canvas and it kept asking me to change the cut setting every single mat and I got annoyed. So I just came back in here and added the exact same one. And then I had some extra room at the bottom of my felt sheet. So that's why I added in some hearts in case I decide that I wanna add any hearts into my wreath. Okay, so one important thing that I want to note here is that my operation is still set to basic cut. So typically when you're working with the maker, when you have one of those unique tools like the engraving tool or the debossing tool, what you would do is highlight or select the item on your canvas and under operation, you would click this drop down menu and you would find the tool that you are looking for. But you'll notice that the rotary blade is not an option here for um, any of the tools. So that means we're gonna leave the operation as basic cut for everything here on our canvas. Then we're gonna proceed through our project by clicking the green make it button here in the upper right hand corner. And then we're gonna take a look at our mats. Now, the piece of fabric that I have, the piece of felt that I bought, is just regular cheap felt from Hobby Lobby, is only nine inches by 12 inches. So because of that, I'm gonna take these hearts and I'm gonna move them to the mat below so that I don't cut off the side of my felt. So if you wanna move items from one mat to the other, you simply click on them here in the mat preview and then click on these three little dots and click on move object. And then you just click on the mat that you wanna move it to and select confirm. Then we're gonna go back to this top mat and we're gonna do the same thing, move object, and then click confirm. And then we have everything here along the top of the screen just fine. Then we're gonna to go to the bottom mat and I'm gonna move the hearts down to the bottom so that they're not in the way. So in case you're new, you may not have realized that you could actually make changes to your mat. Another way that you can actually save material with these rolled flowers if you want, depends on the size that you're working with and things like that. But sometimes you can save material by actually rotating the way that the tail on the rolled flower is facing. So I'm gonna take the um, rounded arrow and I'm gonna move it up like this and kind of put the tail here in the corner. And then you see I can scoot over my um, flower a bunch so that it's actually nowhere close to the nine inch line. So that's a little bit of a pro tip for you um, in case you didn't realize you could make changes here in your map preview. But it's important to know that the changes you make in the map preview are exactly what's going to happen on your actual cutting mat. So things that you do on your canvas, like rotating your flowers, are not going to change the way that they look on the actual cutting mat. You have to make changes here in the prepare screen in order for the mat to look exactly the way that you want it to, if that makes sense. So then once we have all of our mats set up and we're all happy with that, we'll go ahead and click the green continue button to move to the make it screen. In case you guys did not know, the screen right next to the hamburger menu right here, that's the name of the screen that you're on in Cricut Design Space. So I call this one the make it screen. 
So then when you actually get into Cricut Design Space, you're gonna choose your base material, which is essentially your cut setting. So when you set your base material, what that's doing is it's telling your Cricut which preloaded cut settings you want to use. So um, that's why we choose a base material that's as close to the material that we're using as we can. So I wanna click the Browse All Materials link to show you guys that when you type in felt and click search, there are a bunch of different types of felt that you can utilize. So truly the maker is a lot more advanced when it comes to cutting fabric than something like the Explore machines. Now, granted, I don't cut fabric very often. I typically only really cut felt, so this isn't super confusing for me um, or something that I utilize a lot of, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew this was an option in case it's something that you're interested in. So I have just been using the felt cut setting here at the top, um, but of course you have lots of other different types that you could utilize as well, um, depending on what your needs are. So I'm gonna click on the felt cut setting to select it and then choose done. And then what I found that works best for me was under the pressure menu to set to more pressure because the regular felt setting wasn't quite enough with the rotary blade. Then the other thing I wanna do is because I might, I don't know that I'll cut two mats with you guys or not since we're just doing this for an example, but I'm gonna click the remember material settings button um, so that I don't have to change the cut setting every single mat. So now how do we get the rotary blade to work? Because right now it says that we need to use the fine point blade. So this is super, super easy to do. All you're gonna do is next to step two, load tools and material, you're gonna go to edit tools. And then instead of the fine point blade, even though it says that's recommended, we're gonna click on the rotary blade here instead and then click apply. Now, something that's really important to note is that you can definitely still use the fine point blade on materials like felt. You don't have to get fancy with the rotary blade unless you're doing something a little bit more complex. However, I think that sometimes it's nice to give my fine point blade a rest since that's what I use most of the time. I like to use a different tool so that I can give the fine point blade a bit of a break and take advantage of all the other maker tools that I have, but it's not required. Hello, hello everyone, thanks for joining me. Okay, so now that we have this area set up in Cricut Design Space, I'm gonna go back to sharing my regular screen with you. And we are going to, I'm gonna show you how to cut the, um, oh my gosh, not cut. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. The words are a struggle for me today. I'm going to show you how to load the um, tool into the Cricut Maker and how I set up my mat to actually cut felt. So let me zoom in a little bit for you. Oh, darn it. If I zoom in, then you guys can't see that well. Okay. I'm going to move my camera just a little bit. Okay. So now whenever we are going to add our rotary blade into our Cricut machine, this is what we need to do. So first of all, anytime that we have a specialty tool that's basically not a pen, because essentially I only use the A, um, the A clamp for things like pens. So basically everything else is going to go in clamp B. And I like to think of B for blade. So any kind of blade is going to go in clamp B. And to change our tool out, we're simply going to open up clamp B like this. And we're going to remove the fine point blade. Now you can either put it in the little pocket underneath your um, maker drawer if you'd like, or I like to put it down kind of in the side. Sorry, my face is in the way, but the little compartment here on the left side of the maker, I like to drop my tool down in there. So now when we load the rotary tool into the maker, we're going to load it just like this. So the open part of the gears is going to face the back of the machine and the plastic gear part is going to face toward you. Now this does move and rotate, but you don't need to remove this. I know a lot of beginners tend to think that you have to take this out and you don't. You just leave it there and you leave the open exposed part in the back of clamp B. So I'm just going to put this in right here. And then I'm gonna put the silver section back over top of my um, my tool and then close it using the white clamp right here. 
Now, another thing to note that I know is really hard to see from this angle is that you need to have the clamp basically sitting right on top of, or not the clamp, let me think of the words to say. <laughs> You need the gears to be resting right on top of clamp B. You don't want any kind of space in between the gears and the um, clamp itself so that it can work and move correctly. And when you've done it correctly, when you wiggle this um, plastic piece, there's not really any exposed gears that could get tangled in anything. And my understanding is that's the purpose for the plastic covering over the rotary blade. So that's kind of how that works. Dee said, when a lot of us were making masks, a friend used her maker to cut all of them, was fast and Cricut gave a free pattern. Yes, that's so true, Dee. That was a really cool thing to see Cricut do during um, the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. And then Ashley said, when I first bought my maker, I didn't know that was a drawer. I know that's a little secret trick. And I was telling those of you guys who were here at the beginning um, about my little 3D printed tray that goes down inside of my Cricut maker thing. So this is not a part of the maker normally. It normally just comes like open plain. But I absolutely love this thing. I think I have it in my Amazon store because um, that's where I got it, but I'm not positive. But I love being able to store my blades right here because then I never lose them and I don't have any additional storage so I don't have to worry about where my tool holder is. Okay, so now that we have that part, let me zoom out a little bit and I'll show you guys how to set up your mat to cut felt. Okay, so that's a great question, um, but I don't want to answer that right now and get anyone confused, Annapolis. So we can talk about that later. If you want to message me on social media, I can also help you with that. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick that I like to use when it comes to cutting felt on my mats, but I also want to caution you because I messed it up myself earlier. One thing that I really like to do when cutting fabric on my mats is I like to lay down a layer of transfer tape to protect my mat from um to protect my mat from getting sticky like or to losing its stick really really fast but let me show you what happened earlier when I cut all of these paper or oh my gosh I keep calling these paper flowers <laughs> when I cut all of these rolled flowers earlier and I had one sheet of transfer tape down let me show you what happened because it was a mess So I don't know how well you guys can see that. I've scraped a lot of it off, but it absolutely shredded the transfer tape. So be cautious about using this trick, especially if you're doing a big project like this. You probably either want to change your transfer tape every couple of um, passes, or you may just want to lose the stickiness on your mat and then wash it using just dish soap and really, really hot water. Um, because I don't know that this is going to be worth peeling all of this off. It's going to be a super pain. So typically I would use the pink fabric grip mat for any kind of fabric that I'm using. But because my only fabric grip mat is covered in transfer tape, I'm going to use the light grip mat. Because the only difference between the fabric grip mat and the light grip mat is that the fabric grip mat has even lighter tack than the light grip. So this mat's actually a little stronger, but I'm going to put down the transfer tape anyway, so it doesn't really matter if I'm using the light grip mat. So hopefully that makes sense and that still helps. So let me show you how to do it. So I'm going to start by pulling off that little clear cover sheet over the top and setting that aside. And then I'm going to take my transfer tape and I am going to stick it so that the non-sticky side is facing down. So that means the sticky side of the transfer tape is facing up. And the reason for this is because we want to stick the transfer tape to the cutting mat, so obviously to the sticky side. And then we want to leave the sticky side facing up to hold the fabric in place. And then we want to lay it down there nice and flat on top of the mat as well as we can. Oops, and I just stuck a nice hair to it, so that's good. <laughs> so I'm going to try to stick it to like where the, um, the lines are on the cutting mat. I don't want to 
have too much sticking off if I can help it. Okay. Then I'm gonna go to where the bottom of the grid is and I'm actually just gonna cut it off like this. And then I'll smooth it down. So right now it looks a little bit like a mess, but I'll smooth things down here in just a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda pull all those pieces down and there we go. So now I know it's a tough, it's a little bit tough to see, but we have a sheet of transfer tape with the sticky side facing up onto our cutting mat so that when we add our felt in place, it's gonna keep our mat nice and sticky still. So I'm gonna take the sticker off of my felt here and I'm gonna stick it here on the left-hand side just like I normally would and smooth down my felt onto that transfer tape so that the transfer tape holds it in place. Then I'm gonna open up my Cricut machine and it's gonna be just like any other Cricut project. I'm gonna put my machine underneath the white guides and press the flashing arrow button. And you will hear um, the little guides in the machine sometimes get caught up in the transfer tape and it makes kind of a ugly noise. <laughs> but don't worry, it's okay. Oh, shoot, you know what? I'm gonna unload it because I forgot to do something else. I forgot to move my star wheels out of the way. <laughs> so these little white star wheels are great for gripping um, things like keeping your materials in place. Whenever you're working with something like fabric or anything really thick, you wanna move them all the way to the right-hand side so that they don't get in the way anywhere because they will make lines through your fabric. So I forgot that part. Now that the star wheels are moved over, I'll reinsert it. I'll read your comments here in just a moment. And then once the go button flashes, I'll press it to begin cutting. Okay, let me go back to your comments here while this is going. Roseanne said, do I still have a Kmart in your area? You know, I do not know, Roseanne. <laughs> I haven't seen one, but that doesn't mean that it's here. Kristen said, I've heard about using this trick. I'm assuming you mean the transfer tape trick with your faux leather as well. So that's definitely a good point. Okay, so Kristen said, so the transfer tape is fine for say, oh yeah, you're just clarifying. So the transfer tape is fine for say like one or two flowers, but not a whole wreath worth. Yes, Kristen, that's exactly what I learned today. <laughs> Good, Roseanne, I'm glad this was helpful for you. Uh, let's see. Yes, guys, if you don't mind pressing that like button, that's a huge, huge help to me. Thank you so much. Um, Nicole said, how do you know which is which with the different blades? So great question, Nicole. So the side of the blades are actually have a number on them. And I have no idea what the numbers, like why they picked the numbers they did. But if you look on Cricut's website, you can find the number for it. Plus if you change, so if you have the correct tool chosen in Cricut Design Space, which you have to have because the Cricut won't let you cut without the right tool selected, then it will show you what number it is. So if we have time, I can show that um, too. But like say you chose the engraving tool, it would show you number 41 um, on the tool so that you know which tool to choose. I'm glad you like the idea, Donna. Thanks, Phil. This is my, I just got this sweater from Marshalls and I've been wearing it for days in a row because I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys do that, but when I get something new, I get so excited about it that I just wear it forever. <laughs> so I'm still wearing it. I love this tray, Cheryl. This has been one of my favorite things that I have um, bought for my Cricut Maker. Oh, Roseanne said the tool, the tag that I pulled off looks like a Kmart tag. This is from Hobby Lobby. So I don't know what brand or whatever this is, but this is just 25 cents a sheet. Really, really cheap felt from Hobby Lobby. That's where I got it from. So yeah, so it's really super helpful to know. 
Um, okay, so while this is cutting, I can also continue rolling my flowers because I would love to get to making our wreath a little bit um, if we have time, but if not, that's okay. It can always do another live or, um, you know, I can just share it on social media or something. So while this is cutting, I'm gonna go ahead and take the um, outside tip of my rolled flower. So that means it's not the circle side. The circle side is gonna be the bottom of your circle at the very inside. You want the end that does not have the circle on it. And for felt, I like to start by grabbing it in the set of reverse tweezers. And then I'm just gonna start rotating that those tweezers and keeping the bottom of this super, super even. So the first time I rolled these um, at the beginning of our live, I was telling you guys that with paper flowers, they're a bit more forgiving. And that's because with paper flowers, you can adjust the height of everything at the end. But because the felt kind of sticks to itself, you wanna keep it nice and even all the way through because otherwise you're gonna to start to see certain rows of your flower are gonna look really, really funky. So you do have to go quite a bit slower with the felt flowers. And then when I get to a certain point, I squeeze the tweezers and pull them out and I just start uh, like rolling it in between my fingers like this. I find that a little bit easier. I just like the tweezers to help me get started so that I have a nice tight roll. So you guys can probably hear the rotary tool moving a lot. It's lifting and spinning and turning a bunch. And that's just because of the shape of the tool. It kind of has to do that. Um, so it sounds a little funky, but that's totally, totally normal. Oh, I think I left a little scrap in there. Whoops. Roseanne, who knows? If Hobby Lobby may have bought that belt from Kmart. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's the same brand that just now sells in Hobby Lobby. Okay. So then when we get to the end, we're gonna reach this little circle here and what I like to do is just peel this circle back and I'm gonna put tons of hot glue on the bottom of my, of my flower. Now you can see that my flower bottom is super uneven, but that's honestly perfectly fine. Um, you'll never notice when it comes to actually putting it on the wreath itself. So you do have to do a lot of hot glue though in order to keep all the layers together. So that part is a little bit tricky. So once it's really well covered, I like to take my hot glue gun and kind of push it down into the felt and then we'll let it set. Okay, so now that this is finished, I'll go ahead and unload it using the um, flashing arrow. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of pull all the pieces away. So I like the more pressure setting with this felt personally, but a lot of times you just have to cut your first piece of felt and see like how it goes, you know? So the first time I cut this and I didn't use the more pressure setting and it cut fine. I just had a few places where I had to pull it away um, and I didn't like that quite as much. So um, that's why I chose to use the more pressure setting. So the little scraps are kind of coming off in little pieces, but I'll go ahead and pull off my little rolled flower here. We'll kind of set that in the pile with everything else. And then I'll also have these cute little hearts to set aside. Now, because I'd like to have more than one red flower, I think I may go ahead and cut, let me see what time it is. Mm, well, actually I don't have a ton of time left, so I might go ahead and stop the cutting there um, as far as cutting new designs. But now you guys have seen you know, how this kind of works and all the process would just be the same. But you can see all the leftover felt on the transfer tape and how much it was helpful to have that piece of transfer tape down. And it might have cut through the transfer tape in some areas here too. 
but now it's just gonna be one little piece that we need to remove instead of the whole thing. Yep, so it let it actually cut all the way through my transfer tape perfectly. And sometimes the transfer tape will stick to the back of your felt, which is also fine. You can just pull the transfer tape right off, honestly. So see, I'll just pull it off in one fell swoop. And you can't really even see that I used fabric on this mat. So that's the benefit of using the transfer tape. I also have these cute little hearts that I want to glue together too. Let's see. You guys have some questions. Uh, Kristen said, oh, you're welcome, Nicole. Roseanne said, never thought about using felt instead of paper for the flowers. Yeah, it's really, really cute, Roseanne. And it adds a lot of extra texture that, that paper just can't give you. Uh, Kristen said, what size are the flowers? Kristen, I tried to make them about as wide as I could. So I think they're about like eight and a half or eight and a quarter inches wide since my felt is a total of nine inches wide. So maybe we'll go ahead and roll the red flower and we'll see where we get. Kathy said, hi, I just saw you were live. For some reason, YouTube didn't notify me. Kathy, YouTube is a little rebel <laughs> and it often does not notify people like it's supposed to. It is often misbehaving. So I added in these extra little hearts because I thought they would just be so cute if I could just add in some little hearts. So I'll have to cut my other um, mat later and then I'll have a little red heart. And I, what I thought about doing that I thought would be super cute is because this wreath form has little um, holes in it. This is just an Ashland one that I got. It's called a floral crafting ring from Michael's. Um, it automatically had holes in it. I think I got it on clearance for like $3. That's why I bought it. But you can honestly cut the same shape out of just cardboard, out of a box and just make your own. But since it has these holes in it already, I thought about taking some fishing line and stringing across the center of my wreath and then adding in some little, um, adding some of these little felt hearts. So I think that's probably what I'll do to make it extra Valentine's day E. Um, but I really like how thick these flowers are because it honestly just covers the wreath so well. And I'll probably just put, you know, pink, white, and red all the way across the whole wreath. So it's going to look super cute either way. And then to attach it, all I'm going to do is, um, hot glue it. So nothing fancy or anything like that, but super, super cute project that you can do. That's just a little bit different, you know, and it's not to say you couldn't do this project on the explore. You totally could. Uh, Catherine, yeah, she said, can you please post a link for the tool tray? Sure, let me look in my Amazon orders really fast and then we'll roll another, uh, roll another flower together and then I'll have to run. Yeah, sorry guys, I can't give you the full picture of the um, wreath form. I might have to, if I have time later this week, I might go live so we can finish it. Um, but if not, I'll pro I promise to post pictures on social media. Oh. I'm searching in my Amazon orders for your, um, for the tray. I don't remember what it was called. Tray. Hmm. Let's see if I can find it. No. What the heck? Uh, I'll search for some other terms, <laughs> but I'm glad you guys like it. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's called an organizer. Excuse me. That's the better term for it. Yeah. And that tool tray is only $14.99, which is honestly, I think super reasonable because I think the Cricut maker tool holder, which I can show you guys too. I have that also is uh, like $30. So if it's, if you get it on regular price, um, so And if you have an Explore Air 2, I probably would not buy that tool tray because I'm not sure that it'll fit in your drawer. It is exactly programmed to fit into the um, into the maker. But I don't know, what did I do with my tool tray? But that's why, like, the tool tray is really cute for keeping things organized, but I lose it all the time. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I have it around.
down here somewhere. It's the round one, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know where I put it. I put it over here. So I took my tools out of it, but this is what the tray looks like from Cricut. And it opens like this. And you can stick your tools that have the, um, oops. You can stick your tools down in here that have like the gears at the top. So those tools sit around the top of it. And then if you open it, I think you, like your um, deep point blade fits like down in here. And then I forget how you completely open it. You just twist the top off. And then this is where you put the little adaptive tool system, um, the little tips. So you take like your scoring wheel and you put it like down in here. So that's how the Cricut, um, that's how the Cricut one works. I don't think it worked for me. Nope. So if I, if you stick them in these holes, this, um, the tools are too tall, I think. No, it does work. <laughs> I just didn't have them down in there correctly. So you can even stick them in these little holes. That's what these are for. And then you just have all these little miscellaneous pieces. And then this is the cover for, I believe, the knife blade. Or is that my knife blade? No, this is the cover for the rotary blade, actually. It comes with a plastic cover. But I stuck it over here because sometimes if you put them in this tray and you have the plastic holder on them, they're too tall to close your drawer lid. So that's why I stuck it out. But I am really excited about, uh, you guys, the words are absolutely failing me today. Um, but I'm really excited about the Cricut Maker series that I'm going to be continuing because I have so many cool things that I want to show you, um, including a video that is all about the tools. And we're going to talk about Cricut Maker tools from the fine point blade, the deep point blade, the bonded fabric blade, like every single tool that can fit in the Cricut Maker. We're going to talk about it. And I think that that is going to be super helpful because if you are new to the Cricut world in any way and you have a Cricut maker, it can be super confusing to understand um, how all the tools fit together and what fits in what and kind of how everything works. That was my biggest source of confusion when I was new to the Cricut maker. So I want to make a video that's all about tools. And then I want to do some specific videos about each of the tools. So I don't know if I will do a different video on the rotary blade. This might be our only video on that. But I want to do either a live or recorded video on each one. And then my thought process was that I would show you how to use the tool in the video. And then I would write a blog post for you about really cool ideas that you can use with the tools because some people don't know how to use the tools and other people know how to use the tools. They just don't have any ideas for what to do with them, right? So they just need some inspiration for exactly what they want to do. Um, so my plan is for those to all pair together so that you have the how-to of exactly how to use the tools and then also the inspiration for what you exactly can make with them and some ideas to just get your mind going. So that was kind of my thought on how the Cricut Maker series is gonna roll. Um, so yeah, lots of neat ideas. For now, I'm gonna stick to the tools that are just maker specific. I'm not gonna do every single tool that the Cricut has. Um, but as I expand it, who knows? Maybe at, in the future we'll do a full, um, we'll do like every single tool because I think it would be helpful, honestly, for everybody. So that's another flower for us. And these, the texture of these flowers is just so stinking cute. Um, and this was about a nine inch wide spiral. So, or actually, I think I'm lying to you. I think my spiral was like 8.25 inches wide. So it was eight and a quarter inches wide and it makes a pretty reasonably sized flower. That one still has hot, hot glue on it. But like, if you look at it, I have pretty small hands. 
but it's about the size of the palm of my hand. And with a piece of paper, when you do rolled flowers, you have to make a ton of flowers and they have to be really, really big in order to get flowers this big. So I love using felt flowers for that reason because you can cover so much more surface area with a felt flower than you can with a paper flower. So yeah. Uh, Kathy said, do you have any to do anything special to cut felt on the Explorer? Um, not really, Kathy. I would just use the transfer tape trick that I showed you and you can just use your fine point blade. That's totally fine. Now you're going to want to clean that blade with aluminum foil regularly because all the fibers from the fabric are going to get stuck in it. But you definitely can do this with the Explorer as well. You just can't use the rotary tool. <laughs> You guys are funny. I well, unfortunately, the 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 shop is closing. That's why I had to go live early because literally, I he was like, "Well, the shop closes at five. and I was like, "Oh, great, good deal." Um, Roseanne said the only problem with a round holder is that the rotary blade does not fit as well. I agree, Roseanne, and that's why I like this one so much. <laughs> Thanks, Dee, for the reminder. I appreciate you because you all know I'm the worst about time and stuff like that. Kristen said, I already want a maker. This is just going to make me want one more. Kristen, I'm sorry for enabling you um, because I would say the series will probably definitely do that. <laughs> make you want a Cricut maker. My whole goal was just to help you guys to utilize your makers more um, because I know that I have a Cricut maker and I do not use it to its full extent at all. And I, I realized kind of how that was and why that was. And I want to make sure that you guys have all the tools you need to be able to use it as much as you want to. Because I cut vinyl and HTV and paper and everything with mine, no problem. But I wanted to be able to do more, you know? I want to be able to do more and do more exciting things. So I'm excited to show that to all of you guys. Perfect, perfect. Okay, Tracy said, could you use the fabric blade to cut felt on the Explore Air 2? So Tracy, you cannot use the rotary blade in the Explore Air 2 or any other machine besides the original maker or the maker three, but you can use your fine point blade. One last tip and then I've got to run for you guys. Um, um, Annapolis, you can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on TikTok, but I don't check TikTok as often. So Facebook and Instagram are the best. And I have my social media handles down in the description. If you want to go um, find those really easily. And actually, I think I have links to all my profiles. So we can chat about your print then cut question. One last tip and then I'm going to run. So did you guys know if you see the bonded fabric blade, the pink one, um, that's for the Explorer series, that that is the exact same blade as the fine point blade. There is no difference between the fine point blade and the bonded fabric blade. The only difference between the pink blade and the silver blade is literally just the color. Um, and that's because basically it's kind of like having a pair of fabric scissors where you only use your scissors with fabric so that they don't get dull. That was kind of their thought process on the bonded fabric blade, but you don't necessarily need to invest in the bonded fabric blade unless you do a lot of fabric cutting and you intentionally want to do a lot of fabric cutting using the Explore machines. Because on the maker machines, you have the rotary blade, so there's no point in investing in the bonded fabric blade. So I don't even know if you guys have heard of that or not, but there's a little pro tip for you. Okay. Um, so you guys, all the hearts, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, if you um, haven't already subscribed to DIY Alex, I would love to have you as a subscriber and part of our crafty fam. Don't forget to like this video if you learned something new and I'll see you guys.